Eight things that commonly happen when the narcissist hears you've moved on. Guys, you're very welcome to this channel. Himself and myself welcome you here as always. I would like to get into this particular subject for the purposes of people who have moved on and those of you who are following in our wake because move on you will and a better life is ahead of you. Keep working towards it. It's helpful to know, to be able to predict what the commoner gardener narcissist will do when they hear you've moved on and take it from me, take it from a lot of people. The narcissist is always looking at what you are doing. They always look at their past supplies because narcissists feel they have an ownership of you and that they can go back to you at any stage. You are the optional supply when you've been discarded by a narcissist. So overall, these are eight things that will happen. Not all of them may happen, but you may be able to identify some of these things that happened to you when the narcissist heard that you'd moved on. The first thing that will happen and remember the narcissist is gathering information about you still particularly when things don't go well with the new supply when the new supply is in the devaluation stage or if the narcissist hasn't been able to hook anybody suitable to continue or to have a relationship with the narcissist will do what's called a heat check hoover so they'll either get a third party to inquire or gather more intel on exactly what you're doing, how much progress you've made, and have you become such an attractive proposition that you've maybe gained more financial security, um, you've gotten a new job, things are going well for you, or you've gotten a new partner they've heard that you're dating. So they really want the intel to know if it's safe if they're interested and in a position where they need to hoover you. They'll send a third party in. It can be someone even on social media who, you know, if you've blocked the narcissist from your account or they'll send a family member or they'll contact someone that you know mutually together to find out what's the exact extent of your progress. The narcissist will then assess the situation and see how much you've progressed, how attractive you have now become to them, re-attractive, despite the fact that they said that they never wanted to set eyes on you again, how attractive you would be as a proposition. Are you the best supply source out there at this given time? And is it safe to bring you back under control? How much do they need to become vulnerable because that's not something narcissists want to do? How much of a risk would it be if they were to hoover you in person? And what are the chances of that hoover working? Even if it's not safe enough to hoover you in person, what they will do in the hoover situation is put them in your mind. So this is why oftentimes you get a text on your birthday or around the holidays because narcissists have a desire and know the effect that they've had on you. So if you see a text from them coming up or you see any reminder of the narcissist, it literally sparks all those neuropathways, the trauma bond, the cognitive dissonance in your mind, the addiction that we have to the narcissist that was set up in the grooming phase and the love bomb phase. So narcissists know that by putting themselves in your mind at this time, they're going to in some way have control back over you and know that you will be disturbed and it will stop you from moving forwards, at least temporarily. If the narcissist does do the heat check hoover and does do what I call oftentimes what they will do is they'll do the excuse hoover. The excuse hoover is when they've actually left something behind of theirs at your property or somewhere that only you can access. And I am telling you, 
It's nearly a diagnostic tool of a narcissist. They always leave something behind them so that they have an excuse if at some stage they wish to hoover, to phone you up legitimately and say, you have this, it belongs to me, I'd like to call and pick it up. So watch that one. If the narcissist has discarded you, get their stuff out of your house. Pack it all up, send it off with the courier and get every last bit of them away so that they cannot use the hoover excuse, I want to pick up my possessions from you. So that's one, a lot of different Hoover styles that the narcissist will actually use on you if and when they hear that you have moved on in your life. The last part of this number one, what the narcissist does, is that they'll actually Hoover you for real and want to get back into the relationship with you once they've heard that you've recovered enough to be a, an excellent source of narcissistic supply again, once they see that you are willing to take them back and that you've learned your lesson, in inverted commas, and that you're going to be easy to control again and that they can benefit from moving back with you. So that's a big number one of what narcissists do when they hear that you've moved on. Number actually... Actually, that was number two, guys. Can I include that in number two, the real Hoover? Um, number three, they will send a text to your new partner. If they hear that you're dating somebody else or that you're really in a serious relationship with someone else, they will do something to get a message to that person, even call in person. But they'll definitely use social media in some way to get the message to that person that say, the well, that you were double dating them at a given time and that you hadn't finished with the narcissist when you met your new partner or that you cheat or that you do you did something on the new partner that they don't know about or that you met the narcissist only a month ago for coffee all this kind of nasty nasty poisonous attempt to sabotage your new relationship if that is part of what the narcissist hears in relation to you moving on. Number four is, if the narcissist really believes and there's huge evidence to the fact that you've moved on and people are looking to them for a reaction, you know, people are coming up to them saying, Gosh, I hear Paula has moved on and she's, you know, she's doing great and she started this new job. Actually, she's won the lotto. Um, you know, whatever it would be that would attract the narcissist. And she's going to therapy, but she's, you know, doing really well. The narcissist will say to maintain the narcissist's mask and also to, I call it the sweet poison smear of your potent your particular progress the narcissist will say oh my goodness i'm so glad to hear that it's taken a very long time i was very concerned about her mental health hopefully she's gone you know she's done a lot of therapy but ooh, I really, I don't envy the next person that comes along because she definitely has bad mental issues. But I'm really happy for her and I really wish her all the best. But whew, I'm glad that, I'm glad to hear that. So it's like the backhanded compliment. They're wishing you well to keep the mask on to whoever has come with this news to them that is not welcome news. I mean, a normal person who'd had a normal relationship with you would be absolutely, you know, really happy to hear that a partner that they formerly loved and respected and who had been very broken hearted, maybe at the relationship breakdown was now doing well. They'd be really happy to hear that. They'd be relieved. And, you know, that's the normal reaction, not not to resent the fact that the person had moved on. That is how sick narcissists are and how 
evil in a way, it's the only way I can describe it, that they want you to be continually in a downfall position. So that's the little mask tweak that a narcissist will do when somebody actually comes to them and says that you've moved on and you're doing great. Number five of things that happen when the narcissist hears you've moved on. They will attempt to sabotage your journey if they know that they're not going to benefit from it. They know they've done the heat hoover. They've even done the hoover in person and they've been rejected and blocked at all attempts. They will, because they're vengeful, and if it's in their face too much, if they keep getting reminded of it, if you're away in a different country and nobody's saying anything about it, you're not splashing it on social media, they can put it out of their minds. But if it's being put in front of them a lot, they will do whatever they can and you've rejected them to sabotage your progress. And that can even come in the form of reporting you in your workplace, of making a complaint against you, of scratching your car, slitting your tires, interfering with your post. There's so many different nasty things narcissists can do, or they can involve other people in their smear campaign to stalk you, to make you frightened, to report you to the tax office, even if you have always paid your taxes on time. Whatever they can do to put you under pressure and take the shine off your progress and the news that's coming out about you, they will do in a very vengeful, nasty, revengeful way. Number six, what will they do when they hear you've moved on? Number six, they will look to compete with you. So they'll get the news out, even if it's not true, that they're doing amazingly well, and this is often on social media, and it's a real reason not to look at the narcissist's information on social media because it's a real propaganda machine for them. If they've heard and you've posted something on social media, there's often this tish for tat thing with narcissists, very childlike, where they will then put up something very similar, but they'll be doing it better bigger, more glamorous, more dramatic to, to try and take the shine off your achievement. And number seven is not a nice one. Number seven. Number seven is if they know particularly that you have a new partner or you've started a new job where you need routine and you need definites in relation to making plans and organizing yourself, and you have children in common and you've joint custody, they will mess you around in relation to, oh, I can't pick them up, coming late to pick the children up, changing holidays, saying they can't keep the kids for holidays. They need you to take the kids when you plan maybe to go on a holiday with your partner. They'll do all these things that they will coat with a genuine reason but you'll actually notice a big vamping up on the changing of arrangements and even having to go back to court. It'll get so bad or they'll stop paying maintenance. Again, little nasty, nasty things that narcissists do. They have no care for the children, but they will use them as tools, anything to get at you when they hear that you're doing well. And if I can just add on here before we go to the eighth reason, which you might find unusual. If a narcissist is not just your commoner gardener narcissist and they're veering into antisocial or psychopath into that type of psychopathy, it is very important, and I think you will know if the narcissist that you were with is particularly dangerous, for you to keep your progress under wraps, for you to move away from them, and for it not to come up on their radar, so to speak, because narcissists do not like 
their former sources of supply, escaping their control. They really have banked you for life. They do not want you going anywhere. They do not want you recovering. They do not want you to progress unless they can benefit from it and hoover you back in. So if a narcissist suddenly, and they're also a psychopath or an antisocial personality disorder combination with narcissism, they can be very dangerous. They can stalk you and they can look to do the ultimate. So be very aware of the danger if you're dealing with someone that's more than a personality disordered narcissist. And I think most people are aware when they're dealing with someone of that ilk. And in those circumstances, you don't want the narcissist to hear that you're doing well because they're a danger to you and that will threaten them. I just wanted to add that in there for anyone that is in fear of a narcissist hearing about how they're getting on. It is important to protect yourself. So number eight, what does the narcissist do when they hear you're doing well? They'll actually, in their smear campaign of you and their own thought process, in order to get control back over you in both their minds and their community who is feeding them back this information about how well you're doing. They will say that it doesn't surprise them. And this is total projection on the narcissist part. doesn't surprise them at all. You're a user. You're actually a narcissist. They'll be calling you the narcissist, even if it's taken you two years to make this progress. And it's been the most excruciating healing journey that you've ever been on in your life. They'll call you a narcissist. They'll say that you're a user and that you get, you've gotten on and getting to, got to where you are on the backs of other people, that you've climbed over other people, that you've probably defrauded someone out of the money that you now have. And sure, you slept with the boss to get the job that you have. So your progress will be the narcissist's projection onto you of all the things that they do to get forward. And they will smear you in that manner, basically saying you're a fraud, you're a narcissist, you are me, so to speak. You are the narcissist. I, that's actually, that's one that people are amazed at. Um, it doesn't often, you know, get aired in that people don't often get to hear that that's what the narcissist is saying about them. But that's just one of the things. And there are eight of the things that you can be sure at least three should apply to what you would hear when the narcissist hears that you're doing really well in your life and you've moved forward. And remember, guys, if you're not there yet, you will get there. Keep putting the work in. Stay in the community. Keep listening to the podcasts. Get that brain straight. You will get there. A lot of us have gone before you and even if you feel and believe that nobody has ever felt that pain before, believe you me, it's been felt by many of us and a lot of people are well on the road to recovery and please help your fellow community members by giving that hope, particularly at this time of year, by giving that hope in the comments. I'll say bye for now. God bless.